because Middle Eastern time is half an hour after that, you know. So we should start maybe, okay? Yes. Yeah, you'll do the announcement and the music begins. Yeah, okay. <laughs> The digital is more accurate than the. Okay. Ah, I know, no problem. Okay. I don't cuss usually, so no problem. <laughs> yeah, zero. Good morning. I don't have a microphone, so welcome to Trinity. As we come forward now for worship and praise this morning, I just have a few announcements. Cancel flowers today are given uh, actually a week early for Father's Day, but in memory of Philip Morelli and Herman Pastore by their family. And the special flower uh, is given by the family of Ruth Hess, who will be celebrating her 90th birthday this week. So we are looking forward to Ruth uh, celebrating that wonderful day and are grateful for all that does and has done here at Trinity in the past. Vacation Bible School is a week, starts a week from Monday, so if you know anyone who is ready to enroll, please contact our office or myself and we will get them enrolled. It is from 9 to 11.45 each morning uh, beginning on June 19th. Uh, the announcements about supply for VBS can be deleted now. Uh, we encourage you to try and get those back for next week, and uh, we will send those off to the Caring Network. Um, on a sad note, uh, Michelle Michelle's father, Royal Slaughter, passed away last night, and so we will pray for that family, and uh, we will, uh, as he receives his crown of glory, uh, Michelle and Pastor are on vacation, and good news on that side is Jesse When the screen comes up for Children's Church, just send your children back to me, and we will have our time together. God's blessing. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Am I supposed to start or not? Yeah. Yeah. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Ah, uh, uh, you don't? Okay. Enter his gates. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast Love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our God, the song. Baby. 
for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? What could stand against? Gathering prayer is supposed to be you. This is what I was told. No? Okay. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We ask you to bless our worship today and be with us as we uh, uh, minister to the lost. We ask you to uh, give us a heart of faith and trust that would, uh, even though we may not see the fruits of our ministry, we know that you are in control. We pray all of this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, let us confess together that we are by nature sinful and unclean and that daily we have sinned against our gracious God and deserve his punishment now and eternally. We have not given Jesus, our Savior, the full lordship of our lives. We have not fully followed the promises and duties of the Holy Spirit. 
we had not always honored the strong name of the Trinity in thought, word, and deed. We repent of our sins and seek your mercy. Be gracious to us. In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please have sit down, please. Uh, our reading today from the Old Testament is from Hosea. Hosea is a prophet who wrote 710 BC before Christ. Okay, 710, and you see from his writing that he was 
he foretold about the Messiah. So Hosea 5.15. I will return again to my place until they acknowledge their guilt and seek my face and in their distress earnestly seek me. Come, let us return to the Lord, for he has torn us that he, ha he may heal us. He has struck us down and he will bind us up. After two days he will revive us. On the third day he will raise us up that we may live before him. Let us know, let us press on to know the Lord. His going out is sure as the dawn. He will come to us as the showers, as the spring rains that water the earth. What shall I do with you, O Ephraim? What shall I do with you, O Judah? Your love is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes early away. Therefore, I have hewn them by the prophets. I have slain them by the words of my mouth, and my judgment goes forth as the light. For I desire steadfast love and not sacrifice, the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading today is from Matthew 9. Uh, and uh, the gospel, and if you would like to stand up, if you can, go ahead. As Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth. And he said to him, follow me. And he rose and followed him. And as Jesus reclined at table in the house, behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and were reclining with Jesus and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard it, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what, is, what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice, because I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Uh, everybody in fifth grade or under is dismissed for children's group. Trail, for he is faithful, he 
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm sure that my mistakes more make the meeting more interesting, right? So, almost 47 years ago when I was 16, I was uh, scheduled to give a Friday sermon in Beirut, Lebanon. I was a member of the Muslim Brotherhood at an early age and they saw in me the gift of the gab and they thought this guy could be our, one of the, our future preachers. So I was scheduled to give that uh, sermon after uh, six months uh, of, of kind of, they microwaved me into a preacher quickly and uh, I was ready to go, but God had a different plan for my life. I got in a car crash I broke both legs, and uh, instead of giving that Friday sermon, I was hospitalized for 50 days at the American University of Beirut Hospital. And uh, during those days, 50 days, I uh, admired the way doctors were, uh, you know, dealing with my wounds and broken bones. Both legs were broken and I couldn't walk on crutches. I admired uh, the medical team, and I thought maybe I should be a medical doctor, not a preacher, at least I make more money, you know? And uh, so I thought I could prepare myself by, uh, to, I, to, to, I put a target in my life that I need to go to the medical school. So the first thing to do was to teach myself English. So I started teaching myself English by reading comic books. And uh, in, uh, in two years, I sat for an exam. I made it. Uh, but, but one of the things that I taught myself was idioms, OK? Idioms of, uh, in English. And, uh, and one of the idioms was birds of a feather flock together. So birds of a feather flock together. So, so when we learn about a person's shady companions, we usually lower our opinion of that person. We often judge others by the company they keep. Today's gospel tells us that Jesus also dealt with this issue. His opponents did not like the company that he kept. Jesus had just chosen a tax collector to be one of his disciples. If you lived in, in first century Israel, in that culture and time and place, you would understand that this is absolutely incredible. Tax collectors were among the most hated people in society. Even today, the IRS is hated, not liked, right? So tax collectors were hated more, fiercely hated. So back then, tax collectors put in a bid with, with the Roman government for uh, the right to collect taxes. Whoever got the, the higher... Uh, bid, the highest bid would take the job, but he would really, uh, you know, uh, tax the population more than he told the Romans. He would give the Romans the money and keep the rest for himself. So whatever he collected over and above the bid was, to, was his to keep. So the tax collector had the power to, sque to squeeze whatever, whatever he could get out of the population. So then, of course, the tax collector was acting as an agent of the Roman occupying army. So that means that he was a traitor, not only a thief. Furthermore, the Romans were unclean. So, and the tax collector was in cahoots with them. So it meant that he was unclean too. In that culture, you know, non-Jews were considered unclean. So the list of offenses that most people had against the tax collector were long. This is the reason that the term tax collector and filthy sinner went together so often then. So Jesus 
was already bucking the trend when he chose a tax collector to be his disciple. But then Matthew decided to use some of his, you know, ill-gotten wealth to honor Jesus with a dinner. Of course, Matthew invited all of his old friends to this dinner. He wanted them to meet Jesus as well. The big rabbi who was healing and preaching and, and uh, crowds were following him is coming to Matthew's home. So Matthew wanted to brag and invite his friends. And his friends were, you know, like him, either tax collectors or prostitutes, what have you. So Jesus and his disciples found themselves at a tax collector's house eating a meal with some of the scum of society. I still remember that scene from the great movie Jesus of Nazareth after Jesus uh, told Peter to throw the net on the other side of the boat after a long night. After a long night of uh, catching nothing in the net, uh, Peter's nets were almost broken with fish. And he, uh, Matthew discovered that Peter is ma- doing well. So we'll uh, watch a clip from Jesus of Nazareth from the 1970s. But I think I have to tell the story because we don't have voice. Okay, go ahead. So this is a scene when uh, the paralytic was healed by Jesus. Not my, the point, but uh, uh, hundreds were coming to, to his, at Peter's home. But uh, this is Matthew, the tax collector. He is trying to get from the elderly lady more than he should. And, uh, and then he receives word that Peter got a big catch and uh, he did not pay taxes last year. So, so then Matthew wants to go and check him out and see what can he get from him. So he goes to, and he sees that fish is being sold and uh, etc. So the, the news about the big catch is true. So I'm going to go and uh, see what's going on at Peter's home. So Peter arrives, and uh, uh, G- uh, he is not welcome at all. And uh, Peter is held by two disciples because he was going to uh, attack uh, Matthew and uh, be- give him a beating. Then Jesus asked him, who, is, who are you? He said, I'm Levi Matthew. And Peter said, and known by other names too. We can tell the other names in the church, right? So, yeah, so, so Jesus asked him, is your home far? If you can read the lips. He said, no. Can I come dine with you tonight? <laughs> and the disciples, Peter, especially Peter, is this something wrong with you, Jesus? You're, you're going to dine with him? This is preposterous, the disciples thought, you know. So, so in those days, eating was a personal business, eating with people, you know. And, uh, and to eat with a tax collector and his friends was something really out of the norm because uh, they did not sit at tables and chairs. They sat on the floor and they had uh, cushions and uh, like low couches and low tables, and every couch would have three people, and sometimes you're literally physically rubbing shoulders, or sometimes they spill into your lap too, you know? So, uh, and uh, I mean, I know from the Middle Eastern culture when you are sitting close to some people like that, and they are eating with their hands, and then they'll grab a morsel and say, eat this for me, for my, I'm honoring you, it means. And they, you have to take it in your mouth, you know. So, so imagine Jesus sitting with those people, you know, and, uh, and uh, you know, and uh, he is really uh, kind of rubbing shoulders with prostitutes and, and tax collectors. So perhaps now you can understand the reason that the Pharisees as well as the disciples were absolutely disgusted, actually, that Jesus went to, to this dinner, you know. 
And uh, you can see why they said to the, his disciples, the Pharisees said to the disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? This simply went against the accepted guidelines for devout rabbis, you know. Uh, so when Jesus heard what they were saying, he said, those who are well have no need of a physician, as we read. But those who are sick, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. It means I desire mercy works, not rituals. Okay? I, I desire faith, not rituals. For I come not to call the righteous, but sinners. With these words, Jesus tells us, He is a physician of the soul. The cure Jesus offered to the sinners in today's gospel is the cure he offers to all people. His body and blood sacrificed on a cross for the forgiveness of our sins. He took all the sins of Matthew and his friends unto himself. There he satisfied the justice of God's wrath against sin. Jesus separated the sin from the sinner so that God was able to condemn and destroy the sin without destroying the sinner. Then God offers mercy to the sinner. God had another plan for Matthew, who gave up everything and followed Christ and became the evangelist Matthew we know today, the evangelist to the Jews. Christ's sacrifice on the cross is good for our sin also. We, like Matthew and his friends, are sinful people. We may not have cheated people out of their taxes, but we have all cheated in some way or another. Maybe we made, uh, you know, we told a white lie, you know. Another example of sin is what I talked about last week. Last week was Holy Trinity, the, the Great Commission. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, right? And uh, it reminded me then that we have sins of commission and sins of omission. This sins of commission, it means sins that you shouldn't really do. And sins of commission, uh, omission means you are supposed to do something, but you don't. We are supposed to go make disciples of all nations. We are supposed to share the gospel with all cultures. We are supposed to share the gospel with all races. But we sit in our cocoon, maybe on our couches watching football games, and maybe we are diffident from sharing the gospel with our co-worker because we want to go with him or her to lunch. And if we are known as Jesus freaks, nobody would, you know, uh, uh, talk to us. We need Abraham's faith. Abraham's faith that, uh, you know, Abraham surrendered to God and God made him a great nation. Abraham did not see the great nation. Abraham did not see uh, Jacob. He did not see uh, all the. Uh, uh, he did not see Moses. He did not see all the generations after that. But he he walked by faith. He walked from South Iraq to North Syria and then down to the Holy Land without a GPS. Okay, so he came first alone. He went alone with the family, and God blessed him and made him a great nation. I came first alone to Chicagoland and did not know what I was doing, but God knew what he was doing. I started a Bible study in a home of a Muslim woman and then founded two mission societies, Salam Christian Fellowship and Messiah for Muslims. We baptized more than 50 people and helped in the baptism of others. Last week, an Afghani lady was baptized. She's 26. She was uh, working with the American forces in Afghanistan, translating for them. And she was kidnapped by the Taliban. She was raped. She was tortured. And, but she was, she was able to flee from there and arrive to the land of freedom. And here she was approached by a church member in Chicagoland, where, in Chicago actually, where... Uh, He introduced me to her, and we were part of that celebration yesterday. So, also we go wrong when we put, you know, our political choices above our ethical values. Even though, even though uh, we see the persecution of Christians in, in countries like China and the Middle East and Africa, we are indifferent about them and 
we are dif indifferent about the rogue states and there and uh, the U.S. governments. We vote in the U.S. governments that really collude with such regimes, rogue regimes that persecute Christians directly or indirectly. To name a few, we support China with our greedy investments. And we support uh, the Palestinian Authority that persecutes both Jews and Christians with billions of dollars. I've been working with a Palestinian woman uh, here on the south side of Chicago. She is afraid to be baptized because of persecution and, and she would lose her job. Not only in, uh, you know, persecution is not only in the Middle East, even here in Little Palestine. They call it Little Palestine because we have more than 200,000 Palestinians and Jordanians who live here and build mosques and have more than 50 radical Muslim organizations. Now I am one man, you know, sent to more than half a million Muslims in Illinois. The Lutheran Church Missouri Synod claims that they are for missions, but they fall short of supporting missionaries like me who have to work day and night on raising funds in order to keep the mission going. Not all churches are like, uh, you know, Trinity Burridge. I've been coming here since 2007, and this blessed congregation has been supporting me since, you know. So even if you ask any other church, what is your budget for mission, they would tell you maybe 2% or no budget at all. Maybe some churches want to see, like, uh, sub, uh, or want to support missions that show more fruits, you know, than missions to the Muslims. But we, like Abraham, need not to see our, the fruits, you know. We need to trust God in this, you know, in our outreach, that we may, we may not see in our lifetime the fruits, but we have to trust God in that. Jesus, Jesus cured Matthew for lack of faith and we need the same cure that Jesus offered in today's gospel. And we have it. Jesus still offered the same mercy that he offered to Matthew. He offered this mercy to the whole world. He has the only cure for our spiritual maladies. Matthew surrendered to Jesus, and Jesus transformed him. This is why we have the gospel of Matthew today. Matthew was a learned man, you know. Most probably he wrote it in Hebrew first and it was translated later to Greek because he really addressed. And, and the Gospel of Matthew was in the early church, really the gospel that uh, the first hundred years of Christianity that they used to teach and catechize early, uh, converts. So if we surrender to Jesus, Jesus would use us beyond what we could imagine. For we are God's fellow workers. No, St. Paul says we are God's fellow workers, in some translations, fellow laborers. We are Jesus' partners in the incarnation. We are Jesus' partners in the mission. We are called Christians because in the, uh, the early, in Antioch, they called them Christians, meant little Christ, because those Christians showed the same thing that Christ did. They were preaching the gospel. Sometimes they were healing the sick with the power of Jesus Christ, you know. Jesus is in the business of transforming things every day. He transformed the defeat of the cross into a victory over sin, a victory over death, and a victory over the devil. When he rose from the dead, he transformed the death from a door to eternal death into a door of eternal life. He transformed sinners into saints. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your whole hearts and your thoughts in Christ. Amen. We turn to the Apostles' Creed to confess our faith today. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our God who was conceived by the Holy Spirit.
Amen. Amen. Today in our prayers is Phil Wintroth, Bruno, Brian, Judy, Bob, Eileen, Elaine, Jeff, Bob, Steve, Mary, Richard, Ed, Sharon. We also pray for comfort for the slaughters and, their, uh, uh, and ask for peace and comfort for them. We pray for Frank, Mary, and Wanda. We also uh, pray for the family and friends of Claudia uh, Greenland, who died June 8th. And uh, we, 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 as the children, as their dear father, we bring everything to, to the throne of God and ask for healing and comfort for all those who we mentioned our prayers. And we pray as the Lord taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had Given thanks, he gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. May the Lord be with you.
there's power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain.
Heavenly Father, God of all grace, govern our heart that we may never forget your blessings, but steadfastly thank and praise you for all your goodness in this life until with all your saints we praise you eternally in your heavenly kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns forever with God and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his own peace. Amen.
You're the God who stays. You're the God who stays. You're the one who runs in my direction. When the whole world walks away, you're the God who stands with wide open arms. And you tell me nothing I have ever done to separate my heart from the God who stays. You're the God who stays. You're the one who runs in my direction. When the whole world walks away, you're the God who stands with wide open arms. And you tell me nothing I have ever done. Separate my heart from the God who stands. Oh, thank you for worshiping today with us. And uh, we made it, right? Uh, I have a display board with some stuff. Please feel free to take. Everything is free, like your salvation, you know? And uh, I have with me Murad, who's in the wheelchair. He was baptized in December. He is from the south side here, and uh, you can ask him questions or talk to him. Encourage him, please. And another uh, brother is uh, a volunteer with the church. He is back there. He's from uh, Rhode Island, so you notice from his accent, New England accent. So, uh, uh, and please, uh, if you would like to donate to the mission, you, there is a tray there or a basket for you. Thank you very much. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen.